Praise the Lord. I am Pastor Harold Rayford, the senior pastor of the Church of Christ of the Apostolic Faith, also known as CCAF Columbus. We're located at 1200 Bentonelle Avenue, right here in the beautiful city of Columbus, Ohio. I pray you're having a wonderful day. If you want to know more about our church, log on to our website, ccafcolumbus.org, ccafcolumbus.org. We have been the light of Columbus since 1910. One of the things that's really special about our church is its rich history and commitment to biblical studies. This church uh, was the founding church of Enon Bible College, and we continue that commitment to this very day. We have a great core of teachers and ministers at this church who love the word of the Lord. As a matter of fact, tonight, you're going to hear from one of our associate ministers who will share great truths and unlock some hidden truths from the word of God. Please listen carefully. Get your pen out, get your pad out, and enjoy the word of the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Praise the Lord, saints of God. My name is Pastor Earl Brewer from the Church of Christ, where the pastor is Bishop Harold Rayford. Dias of Bishop is Bishop James Gators, and we're here to teach the Word of God. And we want to have a little word of prayer, if that's all right. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being so gracious and so kind to us. We, help, we ask you, Lord, that you would help us, God, to teach this word with clarity, that souls may hear, that souls might be saved, that someone might be edified and lifted up, that somebody might hear this great gospel and ask this question, what must I do to be saved? So I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless us right now as only you can, in Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture is coming from John 3, starting at verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Our subject for this evening is in the form of a question. Do you still believe? And the thought for the question, God hasn't changed. People have a tendency to change their minds about many things. For an example, they may start out majoring in an academic study, and maybe about middle ways they decide that that's not they want, what they want to learn. And so they change their mind about this study. One may start out working in a field or an area, and down the road he changes his mind that this is not what he wants to do. 
some choose a religion and decide that they don't like that religion and they change to another. And so people often change their minds about many things. But I want you to know that God never changes. And so we ask the question again, do you still believe? Or have you at some point in your relationship with God changed your mind? Some change their mind, they've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And somewhere down the road, they say it's not necessary. They decide that it's not necessary to be baptized in his name and be filled with the Spirit. But do you still believe is the question. In the passages of Scripture, uh, this man, Nicodemus, asked the question, how can a man be born again when he is old? And so the scripture starts out by saying, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. These two words we want to address verily, verily actually means truly, truly I say. And so this saying that Jesus is saying to this man is this saying is a true saying. You can believe it because it's true. The next word is accept. That word means not under any other condition other than this one. The question, do you still believe? Why is it necessary that a man be born again. In order for us to answer this question adequately, we have to go back to the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They were commanded by God not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they disobeyed God's word. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so the word told them that they were not to eat of the tree. And they disobeyed God's word. And because of their disobedience, they, were, they had fallen into sin. And because the wages of sin is death, therefore they died spiritually. 
they lost their relationship with God. One has to understand that there are three aspects to death, physical death. There's death of the body, the physical body. Man was created from the dust of the ground. In Genesis 3 and 19, it says, In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, and thou art dust, and thou shalt return. And so man was formed from the dust of the ground. And since he was formed from dust, the first death in the body is that that body will decay and return back to the dust from which it came. Then there is the spirit. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 says, the spirit goes back to the God that gave it. And so man is a three-part being. He's body, soul, and spirit. And so in death, the physical body goes back to the dust. But the spirit says it goes back to the God that gave it. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to the God that gave it. Genesis 2 and 7 says, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Ezekiel 18 and 4 says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also is the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth shall die. This is the process of death in the physical body. And so this death that we spoke about in the Garden of Eden said, in the day that you eat, ye shall surely die. We know that they didn't die a physical death at that very moment. So the scripture had to be talking about a different type of death. It was talking about a spiritual death, a death that would separate them from the presence of God. And because of their sin, they were expelled from the Garden of Eden. Therefore, they had no more communication or relationship with God as they had in the garden. The Bible said that God would come in the cool of the day and speak with them. But because of their sin, that relationship was severed. We're talking about why is it necessary that a man be born again. And since because the wages of sin is death, therefore in order to pay the price for their sin, they had to die. Not just spiritually, but physically. And so all mankind was born in sin. Therefore, all mankind is destined to die. 
Why is it necessary that we born again? As it is written, Romans 3 and 10 says, there's none righteous, no, not one. Every man that was born into this world is born in sin. And therefore, there is a need for the price of sin to be paid. In order for that relationship to be restored, we must be born again. Except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And so our first birth was of the flesh. We were all born of flesh through our fathers and our mothers conceived by our fathers and birthed by our mothers through flesh. But there is a need of a spiritual birth in order to deal with the sin problem. And that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, his relationship with God is still severed until he is born again. And so even in the Old Testament time, the, the Old Testament patriots, according to the law, they offered blood sacrifices. Even in the garden, after Adam and Eve had sinned, God killed an animal and took their skins and covered their bodies with the skins. And so when the law was instituted, it was instituted because of the sins of the people. And therefore they slayed animal after animal. Thousands of animals were killed because of sin. But animals' blood could not take away sin. It only covered it for a period of time or for another period because they had to offer those sacrifices yearly. But there had to be a perfect sacrifice that had to be made. And so Jesus says to Nicodemus, except you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom. And so we're going to go on over to Acts, the second chapter. And in Acts, the second chapter, around verse 1, is where they instituted the plan of salvation for mankind. That statement that Jesus told Nicodemus came to pass in the book of Acts. In Acts 1 and 2, uh, the scripture says in the second chapter, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and on one accord. And there suddenly came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And this is what Jesus was talking about when he told Nicodemus, you have to be born again of the water 
and of the Spirit. And so this is the Spirit birth in the New Testament of the Gospels. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. This is the sign that an individual has been born again. When a child comes into this world, the first thing they do is spank the babies behind that the baby makes a sound signifying that there is life in the child. And so it is when an individual is born again, they'll speak in another language signifying that they have been born again. And so baptism symbolizes the death burial and the resurrection of a body. And so when Jesus came to John the Baptist, John said, it need be that I be baptized of you. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. Not that he needed it, but for our sake, that we would know that it was necessary for water baptism. Except a man is born of the water and of the spirit. And so for an individual to be born again, he has to be born of the water and the spirit. You have to be baptized in the only name given, and that name is Jesus Christ. And once you accept the baptism in water, then the scripture says, and he will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. And so it is necessary, in other words, for a man to be born again, as Jesus told Nicodemus, he has to be born of the water and of the Spirit. This is the plan of salvation. God has not changed his mind about it. When he said it then, it still applies today. But the question is, have you changed your mind? Or do you still believe that it's necessary? We're living in a time where men are dying everywhere. Death is everywhere in our world today. And so it is imperative that we tell men and share this gospel message with them that there is life after death, after one puts off this old physical body, there is an eternity that awaits each and every one of us. It's an eternity that either you can spend in the presence of an all-wise God or you are spended in eternal damnation. And so the choice is up to each and every one of us while their blood is yet running warm in our veins, we have to make a decision in our own minds whether we want to choose to spend an eternity with God or whether we want to suffer damnation in eternal hell. And so the message to you today is, have you changed your mind or do you still believe? And if you still believe, then we need to be sharing this gospel message with those that are yet outside of the ark of safety. So I want you to be encouraged and know that God hasn't changed his mind about the plan of salvation, and neither should we. We should have our minds made up and our hearts fixed and determined to know 
that God will not change. So Nicodemus came to the point of understanding that salvation only comes through the name of Jesus. And so I want to encourage you today. We need to tell somebody about this gospel message. We need to share it with everyone that we come in contact with. We need to let them know that God has not changed. He's the same today, today, and forevermore. And if you want to be saved, if you want to be delivered from darkness, then you have to do it according to way, the way the Bible says. The Bible says, except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And after we put off these old bodies, then there is an eternal destination awaiting each and every one of us. And so you have a choice. You have a choice to make up your mind while you're still in the land of the living. Will you choose Jesus? Will you make Jesus your choice? Will you choose to serve him? Or will you choose to live out your life only to satisfy your own fleshly desires? But God has a better plan, a plan that we can share with each and every man we come in contact with, that God loves them. The scripture says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And so you have to decide in your own mind. The choice is yours. Will you choose to live in the presence of an all-wise and all-knowing God? Everything has already been prepared. There's nothing else to be done. God has already made the sacrifice the wages of sin, the debt has already been paid and it was paid on Calvary's cross through the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He paid the debt and the debt has been paid but it doesn't come automatically. You don't automatically inherit the, 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 the offering that was made. You have to accept the plan of salvation through the name of Jesus. You have to accept being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in the tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. The choice is yours. I pray now that you would make up your mind to choose Jesus and live. Choose him and live. While death is running through this country and through this world, this is no time to play games with God. We need to decide while we can if we're going to serve him or serve ourselves. I want you to know that God loves you. God is always looking out to save you. His arms are always extended out. He's always reaching out for those that are yet outside of the ark of safety. But you can come in. If you want to come in, all you have to do is say, yes, Lord, I want to be saved. And there's more to it than just confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. You have to be born again of water and of spirit according to the scripture. According to the scripture, that's the only plan of salvation that has been made. There's no other way, no other way than that. So I want to encourage you, make up your mind. 
We're here for you at the Church of Christ of the Apostolic Faith. And if you want to call or come by the church, we're here to take you down in Jesus' name. And God stands ready to fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We encourage you now. Make up your mind. It's all up to you. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, Bishop. Wow. All I can say is wow. I know you enjoyed that teaching. I know I did. Listen, if you want to come and worship with us, uh, you can do so in several ways. You can obviously uh, watch us on Facebook, uh, or you can watch us on our website, ccafcolumbus.org, or uh, you can watch us on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a ton of teaching and preaching and singing on our YouTube channel, which again, there you go, ccafcolumbus.org. If you want to uh, and feel so inclined to sow a seed into this ministry, you can certainly do so again at our website, ccafcolumbus.org. The Lord bless you. Tune back in. Stay connected uh, uh, with us as we will continue our commitment to inspiring you through the word of the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day.